All right, we see some people joining. Uh, we're just gonna give it a few more seconds to just let everyone join in. Super excited to have you all. All right, we have a lot to cover today, so we can get started. So hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on best practices for mastering candidate text messaging. So before we get started, a few quick notes. Um, first off, we want to thank you all so much for joining us. We really appreciate you all taking your time off your day to hop on this webinar. Also, please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. If we're not able to get to your specific question on the call, um, we will have a success manager from Sense reach out to you to make sure your answers um, are answered. This webinar is being recorded um, and the recording will be sent out early next week. With that, we're gonna do some introductions. I'm joined today by Craig and Jasper and I'm gonna pass it over to them. Appreciate that. I'm Jasper Pilgrim. I'm a technical support rep at Sense. I've been here for about two years. Uh, I work closely with the carriers. I work closely with the vendors, messaging, and product teams. Um, in a previous life, I was a farmer, worked on farms. Uh, it's quite a big change for me. However, when I joined, it was great timing because I joined at the time uh, that 10 DLC regulations started for carriers, which we'll go into a little bit. So I started on the ground with that, and I believe we have a deep knowledge of that for that reason. So it was perfect timing to join the company. Love working here. I love working with our clients. And uh, ultimately, I see my goal here is to ensure you get the best return on your investment. And I think best practice for messaging plays a tremendous uh, role in that. Um, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet, much like myself, and pass it over to Craig. Uh, thank you, Jasper. Jasper's story is pretty awesome. Uh, like he said, came from a farm and is now in tech. Uh, I want to say hello to everybody. Really happy and excited to be here. My name is Craig Balkin. Uh, I am on the uh, product team. Uh, my technical title is SMS Product Operations Associate here at Sense. Uh, I handle a lot of different things here from sender ID registration to working with the carriers on certain remediations, 10 DLC applications, everything in regards to um, you know, transacting SMS across the ecosystem. A little bit about my background. Um, I've been with Sense for yeah, several months now, uh, really since January. Prior to that, uh, I was pretty much in the same role with the marketing automation platform company for a year and a half. Prior to that, I was here in Northern California uh, during COVID, so I was a, a very, very poor homeschool teacher uh, for about a year. But before that, uh, I actually, for roughly 15 years, ran a small software company that connected other software vendors to the mobile carriers to transact short code messaging. So I've seen a lot of evolution uh, in the channel. I, I'm still amazed at the growth of the channel uh, today and how much of a dominant communications channel that SMS uh, is becoming. I love and enjoy sharing that experience. So I'm very delighted to be here today to talk to you about different regulatory things going on in the ecosystem uh, along with best practices. So with that being said, I will pass it along to Saruthi. Awesome. Thank you, Craig and Jasper. Um, and my name is Sruti. I'm a product marketing manager here at Sense. I've been here for almost a year now, um, and I work very closely with the messaging team um, and helping to support the Sense messaging product. So for those of you who are not familiar with Sense, just some quick background. Um, our goal is to drive communication and engagement across the entire talent lifecycle. And to do that, we offer a full suite of talent engagement tools that can help you and your team source, engage, and retain talent. We currently have over a thousand global customers and we help those customers help serve over a hundred million candidates. We also have over 50,000 recruiters using Sense and our products help drive over 8 million annual hires. Sense also directly integrates with over 60 partners, and these partnerships help personalize communication at scale. On to the agenda. 
So Craig and Jasper will be covering compliance updates, talking about 10 DLC and discussing messaging best practices. We'll also announce an opportunity for our customers to get early access to our new messaging interface, and then we'll go into Q&A. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Craig and Jasper so we can learn more about SMS. All right, thank you, Sruthi. Really appreciate that. So um, I know a lot of you are here uh, to talk about best practices, and we are going to take plenty of time to talk about that. We did feel like it is important to kind of talk and discuss what is going on uh, in the compliance ecosystem. So with regards to the United States, uh, many of you are probably familiar with the FCC, that's Federal Communications Commission. Uh, and just as a, a little bit of background, uh, 2020 during COVID, was kind of a banner year for spam. I'm sure all of you are familiar uh, with getting SMS spam from time to time. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of consumers uh, made complaints to the FCC. The FCC heard a lot of those complaints. And basically here we are in 2023. Uh, back in February of this year, the FCC introduced a notice to propose rules. A little bit prior to that, they basically said that they were going to get involved. They didn't feel like the carriers and the aggregators were doing a good enough job to curb SMS spam. Uh, so we got this notice of proposed rules in February, and then we got, or excuse me, notice of proposed rulemaking in February, and then come March, we got an actual notice of proposed rules. So just so you understand, what they are targeting is SMS spam, and they're trying to put the onus on the carriers and aggregators that connect to the carriers to cut SMS spam basically from invalid, unallocated, and unused numbers in the North American Number Planning uh, uh, Association system, right? So with that, what does it mean and what's the outlook? Well, for now, we, we shall see, but what generally happens is some over, over constriction by the carriers. They are going to be concerned about how the rules are interpreted, how the FCC will enforce the rules. So we will probably see in the next year, year and a half, a little bit more uh, strengthening of various compliance rules, compliance language in SMS. Uh, and that's likely the outlook. It doesn't mean that we won't be able to send text messages. And that's the thing to keep in mind. It just means that we have to play by the rules and we have to honor the rules because the carriers control the ecosystem. The, at the end of the day, we have the TCPA, Telephone Consumer Protection Act. We have all these different FCC rules, but ultimately, again, the carriers control what goes across their networks. So it is important for us to play by their rules. One call out in the notice of proposed rules that I wanna make everyone aware of is there was a notice in that proposed rules about the do not call registry. For those of you that don't know, the do not call registry applies to telemarketing calls and not SMS. In this notice of proposed rules, the FCC is basically saying that they want to codify the do not call registry to include SMS. The do not call registry does apply to telemarketing calls. We at Sense are watching this. So very curious to see how it plays out. Again, always recommend that you engage internal counsel uh, as these rules come into play. All right, so many of you are familiar with 10 DLC. You wanna send traffic on uh, local, uh, local area code, long codes, local area code phone numbers. The carriers introduced the 10 digit long code program a couple years ago. The rollout was somewhat painful, let's just be honest. Uh, it continues to evolve as we move along. Uh, right now, so many of you are aware for our customers on January 26th, uh, the uh, campaign registry, that is the collection of the carriers that manages uh, the 10 DLC program, they moved to a system that manually vets 10 DLC campaigns. Prior to January 26th of this year, that was all automated. It was all done by a computer and was all rather quick. We have moved into this manual vetting process. That was kind of a bit of a rocky rollout. It has since smoothed, it has, excuse me, since smoothed out a little bit. But so you know, all campaigns are reviewed by a human auditor. What does the future hold? 
Biggest question that we've heard around here is will campaigns that were approved prior to January 26, will those campaigns be revetted by a human auditor? And just right now, so everyone knows, the campaign registry has said no, they will not. For those of you that may be new to messaging or those of you that may be new to sense, uh, just understand that the carriers have pretty much moved into this know your customer uh, sort of vetting, okay? When you apply for 10 DLC, your company is vetted, you get a brand score. We'll talk about that here in a few seconds. Uh, they want to know everything they can about who is sending uh, those messages. In terms of various requirements and timelines, uh, your federal employment identification number for your business, business address, things like your business credit score are checked, uh, as well as we believe uh, a LexisNexis, that's a case law, uh, a case law check to see how many times you've been sued. Just so you are aware how to send handle this, we file all the campaigns for you. We handle everything. It is pretty much turnkey. But if you come to Scent, and we hope that you do, new 10 DLC campaigns, if you want to send on local area code phone numbers here in the United States or Canada, new campaigns are required for any new customers. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jasper because we're going to talk about banned use cases. Uh, and Jasper, why don't you take that away for us? Yeah, absolutely. So related to these in DLC campaigns, there are some cases that we just can't be involved in. Those messages are not going to be received. The numbers won't work. They just completely don't do them. Uh, most of those are encompassed in this acronym SHAFT, that is sex, hate, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. We really don't run into that a lot with tech, recruiting, enterprise, or any of that. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. And it's also, you know, uh, carriers are pretty, it's not mistaken a lot. So we don't get a lot of false positives for hate text or alcohol text, et cetera. But with that being said, texts that are related to predatory lending, debt consolidation, uh, easy money type messages, those type of things do share similar language with recruiting and staffing and enterprise businesses. Um, so for that reason, we'll go over that a little bit later on in this webinar, um, those particular language choices and how to avoid them so we're not mistaken for a banned use case. Um, and yeah. All right, thanks, Jasper. A couple of things to be aware with 10 DLC. When you file a 10 DLC campaign, I did mention you will get what's called a brand score. That brand score will be zero to 100, 100 being the best and zero uh, being the worst. Okay, so a few of those limitations. When you get a brand score, that helps to determine when you then turn around and file campaigns, what will your message throughput per minute be on AT&T? and Verizon, and it also applies, especially with T-Mobile, to the amount of SMS segments that you can send in a 24-hour period. If you are uh, a trust, if you have a brand score or trust score, sometimes called a trust score, of 75 to 100, that will allow you the ability to send 200,000 segments, SMS segments to T-Mobile subscribers a day. But if your brand score is a 25 or less, that will only allow you to send 2,000 SMS segments per day. So it does have a lot of impact. And with regards to the filtering algorithms, so you are aware, the filtering algorithms are dialed up either, um, either very low. If your trust score is high, filtering algorithms are sort of, you know, they're a little bit more hands off. Whereas if your trust score is low, the filtering algorithms have one eye open. They're kind of watching the traffic that's going across uh, across the network. I mentioned already a little bit about throughput. This can in, impact your messaging. If you are sending more than a few thousand messages, if your trust score is low, you're sending more than a few thousand messages to T-Mobile subscribers. Well, once you hit that 2000 cap, your messaging to any T-Mobile subscriber will cease. Those are some things to keep in mind as you kind of think about your brand score. And again, here at Sense, we can kind of help work through this. We can kind of help think of alternatives. There are some. Just reach out to your customer success manager or account manager. Some questions we get, can it be increased? Again, another question, reach out to your CSM or your AM. The answer is yes, it can. Uh, but there are a lot of things that go into trying to increase your 10 DLC uh, brand score. All right, so real quick, what is a text message? 
We want to reinforce these points here today on this webinar. The brief history is this. It was kind of a, kind of a global initiative uh, to develop mobile communications uh, via, via text, for lack of a better word. Uh, this happened in the late 80s, but the first text message was actually sent uh, in, I want to say, in 1993. The tenets are that it is basic text. And a theme that we will be in re reinforcing today is there is no HTML support for an SMS text message. SMS text message, it's the same thing. It is 100% basic text. So I think, we do, Sridhi, do we have the poll here? We do have a poll yeah. here. Yeah, all right, poll awesome. Here. Sorry, so I lost track here. of my slide count, Sridhi. <laughs> The question here is, what does SMS stand for? Is it simple message system, simple message service, or short message service? Give you guys a few seconds to respond, and then we can share the answers and pass it to Craig so he can give us the correct one. Oh, I All have right. to answer the poll there. <laughs> All right, so people guess mostly short message service. Is that correct? Uh, it is short message service. Awesome. So outstanding for those of you that guessed it right. And again, that key word is short. All right, so let's get into the meat of why we are here, okay? A lot of you have questions about carrier filtering. Uh, so you know, what is carrier filtering? These are programmatic algorithms that the carriers maintain at their short message service center that are looking for different patterns, certain things in messaging that will allow them to block messaging to their subscribers. Ultimately, all of you that are here today need to understand that the carriers are doing what they can to simply protect their customers. That's what carrier filtering comes down to. And it comes back to the theme that we all have to kind of exist and transact messaging within that ecosystem. So we'll spend some time today, we're gonna to talk about trigger words, the various words that you may see, certain keywords related to ban use cases that can instantly sync a messaging campaign. We're gonna to talk too a little bit about message scale and how that applies to carrier filtering algorithms, right? The more of the same message that you send in a short period of time increases the odds that the carriers may filter that message. So that's something to think about as you plan through your messaging campaign. We're going to talk about links. The honest to God story is that AT&T, especially, they dislike links for whatever reason. Uh, the carriers aren't just in general big fans of links but they tolerate them. There are some best practices that we can follow uh, to, to really kind of increase the likelihood that your message will, will get through. And we'll talk a little bit, we're not gonna go on a deep dive on message encoding, but we are gonna talk about the two types of encoding, how messages are essentially encoded uh, as they are transacted from sense to the carrier to the device. Uh, again, not a deep dive, but it is kind of an important lesson as we talk about message segments, as we talk about carrier filtering, uh, those sorts of things here a little bit deeper into the webinar. And Jasper, you wanna take it away on the next slide? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just kind of circling back to shaft and our ban use cases here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't run into a lot of shaft violations, the sex, hate, alcohol, tobacco, firearms violations, um, but we do occasionally run into messages that are mistaken for predatory, easy money lending type services. Um, those tend to have more uh, terminology that crosses over with recruiting and staffing versus obviously you're not gonna be texting sex in all caps or other banned words that would trigger these filters. Uh, the important thing to remember here is that this filter is essentially an algorithm on the carrier side. These aren't people reviewing these messages and saying, hey, that's a banned use case. So it can have a false positive. And those false positives can result in uh, a temporary failure of all your messages on that number. It's not permanent. It is just a filter on that type of content, but it's important to uh, correct it where we see that when we run across it. And I think Craig may have a specific example he could bring up here as far as trigger words and how they relate to sense and 
Yeah, I think this is really a, a good opportunity to kind of reinforce this point with a little bit of a poll. So Sridhar, you want to take it away? Yeah, so we have another poll over here. And the question is, why was this message filtered? So I'm going to read out the message for you guys. Spring is here and travel RN slash LPN contracts are opening up. Where do you want to go? What's your specialty? I have over 7K jobs that I'm here to weed through for you. Put me to work for you. Call me or text me back. So why was this message filtered? Was it because A, 7K, B, multiple question marks, or C, weed? So we'll give you guys a few seconds and then we'll share the responses. This is, this is a fun one, folks. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to see the results. All right, most people guess weed. Exactly. All right, most people guessed weed. I have no further comment on that. Um, I, I do know that it would really, uh, really stink uh, to be in the guarding business and want to send text messages. Just so everyone's clear, we had sent, do advise, if you partake in that, please do not text your candidates while you are doing so. A perfect example of a trigger word crushing a campaign. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, folks. Uh, I saw carriers that I've never heard of here in the United States. They could not wait to filter that message. And, and that's the, the lesson that we are trying to communicate to you today, especially when Jasper mentioned kind of those words that are synonymous between uh, recruiting and lending and credit and debt. Thank you, Sruthi. That was awesome. Awesome. And that kind of brings us into broadcast at sense. That's mass text, blasting text, whether you're texting two people, 200 people. This is looked at a little bit differently than one on one text messaging, um, namely because it is max mass text messages. This increases your filtering odds if you're not following best practices. And frankly, I think they're looked at a little, a little more closely than uh, one on one text messages. So for that reason, especially with broadcast, we want to use the best practices that we're discussing here today. Um, in particular, there's something called a segment count in text. Uh, this can relate to the encoding, or it could be related to emojis, special characters, things um, that you may be adding into your text. And in, in sense, in broadcast, we have a character count at the bottom before you send out this blast to let you know, um, hey, you might be sending too long of a message or not. Um, in this case, the segment count matters because if we use emojis, or other special characters, this can increase the word count. It'll be larger, greater than you're expecting when it's sent out, and that can increase the filtering as well. Um, but most importantly, what I would recommend in relation to sense and sending out these broadcasts is to uh, make the message unique for each recipient. We have variables that we can place so that you can put high first name and it'll pick it up from the records within the ATS systems and put their name there. And when that goes out to 200 people, instead of saying, hi, all, we're saying, hi, Craig, hi, Jasper, hi, Sruti. And that's seen more as a unique message rather than I just sent out the same message to 200 people. Um, so it's beneficial to use those best practices with these mass texts because they are looked at a little bit stricter than one-on-one. Yeah, and, and on this slide too, thanks, Jasper. Um, if you could go back to that slide real quick. Thanks, Sruti. Um, one one thing that I wanted to call out to everyone here, okay? SMS is an engagement tool, um, and we really we really want to reinforce that theme today. Um, we don't want everybody making statements, okay? When I was when I was young and in high school, um, I never got a prom date because I said, "Hey, let me know if you want to go to prom." Okay, that's a statement. Nobody ever let me know. Unfortunately, it's very sad. We want you to ask questions. We want you to drive responses. Inbound engagement from the candidate, okay? It lowers filtering risk, and it just, it just has an overall positive effect on your net promoter score. So again, reinforced theme, we'll talk about even a little bit more as we move on the webinar. Awesome, links. I love links, you love links. Candidates love links. That's how we communicate in SMS because we want to keep it short. So we offer these links to get the additional information. Uh, unfortunately, the carriers don't necessarily love links as much as we do. And in particular, AT&T is pretty strict about it, I would say. 
but they tolerate them uh, as long as we follow a few short rules. Uh, first, don't use long links. I'm thinking of links that are over 30 characters and two reasons for that. It can split up a message if it's long enough. And also uh, when it's received on the candidate's phone, it could just cover up the whole screen. It, it just does not look clean. And those type of messages anyway tend to get filtered. Um, and that kind of touches on the SMS segment count that we talked about a little bit earlier and we'll go into more detail in a couple of slides, but long links can get broken up and then they may not work in any case. Uh, so for that reason, we would recommend using a shortening service. Uh, you could use your own domain in that case, or you could use a shortening service uh, that we provide at Sense. But what I don't recommend is using the shortening services we're probably all familiar with, which is tiny URL and bit.ly. Uh, there's nothing nefarious about those, uh, but spammers and other people do use them and carriers really can't identify, is this a legitimate use case for that shortener? So I personally would just recommend use our sense shortener links. They're there, we have the ability to do that and they generally more often than not will go through. So keep using the links, but just be cautious. <laughs> Agreed. All right, so we, uh, we're going to talk a little bit here about message encoding. Uh, messages are encoded essentially in two different sort of character sets. Uh, we have uh, GSM, which is essentially the global uh, system for mobile communications. And then we have an encoding set called UCS. That's the uh, universal coded character set. Uh, we're going to get into why this matters. Uh, but so you know, different encoding different segment counts. So that, that'll be a theme on a few slides here as we kind of talk about emojis, as we kind of talk about especially special characters, and we talk about things that you may copy and paste from different Word documents as you draft uh, SMS copy. All right, so like I said, UCS encoding, universal character set, uh, and DSM versus UCS encoding, so you know UCS encoding, it results in a shorter segment count of your message. The carriers are basically counting these messages because they have to encode them to a different character set uh, in shorter segments. Carriers generally support up to 1600 characters in one SMS body. But so you are aware, some carriers, some devices can tend to break messages. Few other things about UCS encoded messages. They're, is essentially a higher risk that your message will be delivered in parts, which is a poor user experience to the candidate. And there is an elevated filtering risk when your messaging has UCS characters. For various reasons, the carrier filtering algorithms are kind of looking at this, wondering how that message was generated. Was it generated by a computer? Or was it generated by a human? It does slightly elevate your filtering risk. And with that being said, I'm gonna hand it back to Jasper so he can talk about emojis and we can kind of clear up the space on how those are treated. Yeah, so emojis are encoded in UCS. So everything you just said applied to these emojis. Uh, the main thing I wanna stress with emojis, you can use them, they're fine. I use them in my text. Uh, don't overuse them. And to be more specific, I would say don't use more than one emoji in your message. Don't send two smiley faces in a row, et cetera on 10 digit long codes. I'm thinking of numbers you know, here that aren't toll free, that aren't short codes because emojis can increase the segment account and it can just in general increase the filtering odds, particularly with T-Mobile. And unfortunately I do see this a lot, uh, emojis calling this, causing the segment account to uh, increase for T-Mobile. And eventually that number does get filtered. And we don't want you to be filtered because of a smiley face at the end of the day. So use them, absolutely. Um, but don't overuse them. If you have any doubt, reach out to support it since. We're happy to review these type of messages and redraft as necessary. Um, we have a lot of historical experience about what might or might not go through. So when in doubt, just reach out to us, but just be cautious. Same with the links. Don't overuse them. And yeah, use natural language as well with emojis. Make it look like a nice message. Yeah, no, for sure, Jasper, and thank you. So you, everyone is kind of clear, GSM, uh, that's kind of the happy place uh, for how we want messages to kind of go up to the to the carriers. Uh, the simplest way to describe that is general English alphanumeric carriers. 
this puts you in a happy place of 160 character segment counted messages, and it also helps to decrease your filtering odds. And we'll, like I said, we're, we're trying to reinforce themes here, so we'll talk a little bit more about that further down uh, in the webinar. Special characters. This would be something else we would just simply advise do not overuse, but there's two that I want to discuss here. It's the dollar sign exclamation mark. Those are the two most common. Um, with the dollar sign, we see this get filtered quite often, and it's not necessarily if you're using it, overusing it necessarily, but uh, carriers and the algorithm do kind of look at these messages holistically, so they may let go one dollar sign and another message that dollar sign could trigger it. Um, Generally, I would just advise getting rid of this dollar sign. We could use USD or Canadian and then the amount, um, and that will not trigger a filter in that case. Um, so I would just avoid those. But with exclamation marks and other punctuation, these type of special characters, I understand sometimes we're excited, we're happy, and we genuinely want that exclamation mark, and that's fine. I see these go through. Unfortunately, if someone wrote a sentence like this, one exclamation mark does the job, exclamation mark, I have doubts that that would go through. Um, so just be cautious using it. Don't overuse it. Don't put two exclamation marks, two question marks in a row. Um, and as I mentioned, sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes it just works out. But repeated patterns of this will eventually cause that number to be filtered for sure. Yeah, thanks, Jasper. And, and and I think to reiterate too, it's 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 just a better candidate experience. Um, the the candidate understands what one dollar sign means um, versus putting three dollar signs in in front of the money. Uh, we, I've already talked a little bit about character limits. The key question uh, on this slide is: Does going over 160 characters risk filtering? Uh, the reality of it is, is maybe slightly. Um, we here at Sense, and, and I believe that the carriers and aggregators to a degree understand that it's difficult to convey your message in under 160 characters. So it's a very slight risk. As long as the message is encoded in, in GSM, that's where the happy place is. But if you're using emojis and that sort of thing uh, with a really long message, that's where I would definitely recommend kind of dialing back on the emoji usage and trying to keep your message as a, as a GSM encoded message. Sense has tools that will help you to do so, um, just so I am clear. All right, awesome. Okay, this is a, this is a big theme for Jasper and I. Um, talking about SMS versus email. The reason we're going we're gonna to kind of talk a lot about that today is because we see this a lot uh, with recruiters inside the Sense ecosystem, and we want to help. We want to help make it better, right? We're not here to. We're not here to call out anyone. We're not here to pick on anyone. We want to improve uh, your messaging because we want you. We want the recruiters. We want you to make more money. You make more money, you get better candidates, get better response rates. Okay. So key theme we're talking about today: email is not SMS messaging. Okay, they are two different things. Uh, an SMS cannot be formatted like email. And the key thing: we took this poll, right? We call an SMS. It stands for short message service. Keep your texts as short as possible. Yeah, the candidate doesn't want to read a novel. Uh, they expect text to be short. When we text our friends, when we text our significant others, we keep that message short. So that's something to keep in mind. Drive engagement, send multiple messages versus just sending one long message. And we, at some point in the webinar, are going to kind of demonstrate that. You can actually see what some of these messages look like on your device. And you can also see how we would recommend kind of improving that message. All right, so like I said, SMS and email, two different things. What you, one key thing to keep in mind, what we see here from time to time is folks that actually copy an email that went out to their candidates and they paste it in a text message. Just so we are clear, that is a very poor candidate experience because at the end of the day, if I'm the candidate and you send me the same thing in an email and I get it in the text, why do I want to opt in and, and get text messages from you when I'm getting the same thing in an email? Okay. 
Uh, take the time to change the copy. Avoid duplicating copy downstream to the candidate. Your response rates will be better if you are using email and SMS together. I, I can't emphasize this enough, but please draft content specific to each channel and limit in SMS, limit your calls to action to just one. Jasper, you wanna talk about drafting content safely? Yeah, absolutely. If you are going to copy and paste, I first would recommend not to use any word processors like Microsoft Word, Google Docs, et cetera. Um, either use our message box instance messaging because that'll keep the encoding proper and ensure whatever you're pasting comes out and you see exactly what it will be sent as versus MS Docs, Google Docs. The encoding gets switched around, special characters get eaten up, added, et cetera. It just ruins your message in general. So I would recommend using Sense Messaging to draft those messages or Sense Templates. However, you could also use Notepad, text edit on Mac OS, uh, basic text editors that are just doing plain text that'll also ensure you're seeing what you get essentially. But the big thing is use Sense, it's there. Uh, just please don't use Google Docs, MS Word. I can tell when people do this, I know what these messages look like. Um, they don't go through, the candidates don't like them. and a lot of times the messages don't, don't make sense, it's broken up. So be safe when you draft, use sense templates. It's there for a reason. And if you don't wanna use that, just use a plain text editor for copying and pasting. Okay, so we wanted to show you a live example because we believe that it will help reinforce some of the themes that we're talking about on the webinar. So we have a message, okay, then we're not, again, this is, this is a learning opportunity. We have a message that went out on sense. Uh, you can read the message on the screen and there's a few things to call out here, okay? We have some email formatting. We have a lot of various special characters going on. Uh, we have some capitalization. This is so we're clear. I'm sure you see a lot of messaging best practices webinars uh, and, folks have talked about capitalization. I, I'm just gonna put it to, to everyone here very simply. Only your parents should be texting you with capital letters, okay? There is no reason to text any candidate with capital letters. Uh, it, it just has a poor user experience effect. But you will notice that in this message, we have guaranteed in capital letters twice. We talked about the synonymous uh, synonymous words between uh, debt consolidation, financing with recruiting, guaranteed is a big and problematic word. You can actually see this yourself. Just so you know, you're not opting into anything. Uh, we're not going to spam you. But if you take out your mobile devices and you send sense one, you can do it with a space. You can do it without a space. So 345345, that's a short code. So we are clear. You can see what this message looks like on your phone. Um, so, you know, Jasper, I, I have I, to tell I, you, I see it's on a short code and I'm just looking at this, but I, I feel like I have a guarantee for you, Craig. What's that guarantee, Jasper? That if you weren't sending this on a short code, it would guarantee be filtered straight to spam. <laughs> You're hundred percent right. Jasper, this message was 100% filtered, okay? And in all seriousness, folks, uh, those capital guarantees, this poor formatting, that is the reason why. This message here never had a chance once it started leaving sense. So again, Ruthie, you can put us into kind of this making better slide we have here uh, on the right. So we have improved that, and you can see what it looks like on your device just by sending sense four. Again, we sent it on a short code. Uh, short codes are pre-approved with the carriers. Uh, we've kind of made it clear we're just testing this, and that's the reason these messages didn't get caught up in the carrier filtering algorithms. And we have some other keywords for you to kind of play around with uh, as you kind of think through how you want to improve your messaging. I think uh, one of the easiest ways to improve, and it's always my first recommendation, is to shorten your message. Uh, it's in the name, short message service. Uh, keep in mind, it's not an email. Uh, we don't want it to be long. We don't want it to be broken up. And we also want an easy reading experience for the recipient. Uh, if you look at some of these longer messages on your phone, as Craig has said, and test these out, they're pretty long. They'll cover up your entire screen and you have to scroll on the phone, which is not an ideal experience. So mainly keep it short, but also limit it to one call to action. If you're having multiple call to actions, it's probably gonna serve better 
as an email or perhaps even a call at the, in that case. But um, if you follow those two main things and the best practices, I guarantee you, guarantee you that you'll be fine for sure. Just keep it short. The problems I personally see are in longer messages. The longer these messages get, the more likely we are gonna accidentally unintentionally break these best practices. Um, but to that point, if you have multiple call to actions, please use an e email essentially. That's what it's for. Um, it's not gonna go over well with SMS, unfortunately, and it's just a better experience for the user and candidate on their end as well. And they have better response rates, rates as well when we have single call to action. When we've, I've seen cases where we've kind of stacked them on, to be honest, you, we would have three or four in one message and those response rates aren't nearly as good as the response rates where it's a single call to action and very clear what we're asking and what we want. Keep it short. <laughs> Thanks, Jasper. Um, another theme here, okay? Personalization is very important. We want to impress upon you to personalize your messaging wherever possible. Right? Personalization, it increases response rates. It builds a rapport with the candidate. It shows that you care. And as we talked about previously, some of these different name variables as we talk about broadcasting, we talk about messaging at scale, these variables, the variables of different first names, they do help to reduce broadcast filtering odds. You with FinCent have the ability to add a lot of personalization to each messages, to each message that you send. And we highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of that. That's pretty much all I have for this one, Fridhi, if you wanna Go to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so you've heard me say statements, questions. Okay, we want to driving engagement. We want to asking questions. So again, the ability to see how this looks like and play with it on your mobile device, if you so choose, you can use this keyword is sent to to three four five three four five. Hi Julie, we have an urgent need for an ICU traveler in Denver, Colorado, mid September start. Let me know if you are interested and I can supply details. We don't want Julie to let us know. We want to ask her. We want to, we want to try and drive some engagement so we can either move on and find somebody other than Julie, or we can start getting ready to place Julie. So we'll move over to a good message where we've kind of, you know, essentially made the message a little better. Really, if you want to run that slide real quick with the good message. All right, hi Julie, we have an urgent need for an ICU traveler in Denver, Colorado for a mid-September start. Does this position and location interest you? As you can see what we've done here with the CTA is we're kind of attacking this from two angles. We wanna know if the position is interesting to Julie and maybe she really doesn't wanna live above 5,000 feet in Denver, Colorado. Maybe she wants to go to Mardi Gras. Maybe for whatever reason, she wants to, uh, to, to live in North Lake Tahoe, okay. So that's the question that we're asking. That's the response that we're trying to drive from Julie so we can get, you know, I don't want to be in Denver, uh, but I need, I'm looking for a new gig. Or yeah, I want a gig, but I don't want to be uh, in the ICU, whatever the case may be. Sense five to three, four, five, three, four, five, if you want to see that on your device. Speaking of sending things to your device, another thing I would recommend is test your messages. Test them with your colleagues, your peers, your friends, whoever you want to text it with, um, and try to test between devices. I mean, obviously, the big ones are iPhones and Androids uh, to see how they appear, because I know when we're shooting off these messages all day, we're not thinking of how it looks on a smaller screen. We're staring at our computer, uh, computer monitor. It's a giant monitor. Everything looks golden. But again, it's not an email. Uh, it's going to get smaller on that phone. So we want to review the message length um, on a device, an actual device. Uh, and if it looks fine there, you're probably okay. But if it's long, if it's breaking up, if it's covering half the screen, if you need to scroll to read all of it, it probably needs to be shortened in that case. And I, I think that's to the point of thinking of your audience. And Craig, I believe you could speak a little bit on that. Yeah, I, this is this is an important theme, um, and and you know I want to definitely drive that point home that Jasper had mentioned. Okay, we want you to think of your audience and put yourself in their shoes. Uh, the candidate does not care about other candidates, which I'm sure most of you know, right? And we want we you know with some of this advice, we we want to try and demonstrate that 
all of you care uh, about each individual candidate as we're thinking about personalization, as we're thinking about not going crazy with emojis or multiple dollar signs. Uh, we want you to take the time to craft the right message to the right person. And that's really what we're here to help you do. And, and a big theme to this webinar. Jasper, you wanna talk about testing smaller? For sure. Um, test smaller, test early, test often. We want to break that and see, is it going to get filtered? Are there you know, best practices that we're not following here, et cetera? How does it appear for the recipient? Maybe it won't get filtered, but it's just not a genuinely not a clean message that you want to send out to people. Um, so test often and test with your peers. As mentioned earlier, you know, test between devices as well. Um, but while you're testing, don't be afraid to play with it. If you think this may not look as clean, this may get filtered, et cetera. Just go ahead, you're just testing. You wanna see if it will get filtered. And as mentioned earlier in the webinar, a lot of these filters are very temporary, very specific to a message, they're temporary. So don't be too afraid of it. It's not the end of the world, we can fix it. And it's a, it's a learning process. These things do change over time. Um, so test for sure. And if you didn't like how your test turned out, please reach out to us. I'm happy to look at it, redraft, determine what may have happened there. Um, and I can do that. If we test early, test often, we can redraft early and often as well and keep it moving. Yeah, no, definitely, Jasper. So, you know, something that we won't definitely want to reassert here as we kind of come closer to the end of this webinar is all of you are doing a lot of messaging and messaging is driving a lot of your placements. Um, messaging is really important. We understand that here at Sense, but I certainly wanna to communicate to you that there's no reason that you can't meet weekly with peers, uh, with managers to assess how your messaging is doing, to look at content, to peer review content, to think about how you can improve content and maybe group strategy writing sessions uh, uh, to, to draft better content. These are things that we can also help with as you have different check-ins with Sense teammates, uh, Sense, uh, your Sense customer success manager, your Sense account executive. Definitely pay attention to your analytics, analyze response rates, monitor opt-out rates, make sure none of those are spiking as you start to be a scientist, as you start to push these buttons and you start to, to um, you know, pull on these levers. If you ever see anything that looks a little odd, obviously feel free to reach out to support or any of your sense teammates. As you're already aware, some of you I'm sure have had a great experience working with Jasper. He's an amazing asset here at Sense. Um, we will be delighted to help you. All right, awesome. so yeah, oh, Jasper, you that's you, that's you, go for it. Awesome, awesome. So uh, as mentioned earlier, we're coming to a close, but ultimately what this all comes down to is, as I mentioned, that it's an algorithm, it's not a human reviewing these messages. Uh, so ultimately the algorithm is looking at these messages as a whole. Uh, so what we're running into, what I see uh, when we, see strict filtering is multiple bad practices. Uh, so it's not just, I wrote a dollar sign and now my whole line is filtered. We don't run into that. What we run into is uh, long messages, segment counts broken up, lots of special characters, et cetera. Capitalization is another one. And of course the big ones being the trigger words that we've discussed a lot here, uh, which I think Sense is being quite helpful with uh, as far as the tools we're having to identify those. Uh, and Craig, I'll, I'll let you kind of speak a little bit out on the uh, the keywords for this short code here, uh, since you did set those up, but yeah. we do have examples for that that we can yeah, discuss. So, absolutely. So just so everyone's aware, we have sense one through three, one, two, and three, sense one, sense one, two, sense three, set up on three, four, five, three, four, five. Those are kind of messages that we, three messages that we can improve upon, and then four, five, and six, Sense four, sense five, sense six are keywords that you can use to kind of improve upon. And, and just so you know, if you are filtered or if you are having deliverability issues, file a support ticket or reach out to any of your sense team members and we can help with that. I definitely recommend personally that you review the message with your peers, your manager. I highly recommend that you consider complete re, completely redrafting some of your content. Uh, before you sort of re-release that into the ecosystem. Sometimes campaign pauses can work. I know that's very difficult for a lot of you to um, 
you know, to really tolerate. And I understand that. But for those of you that may be able to in your workflow, a campaign pause sometimes will allow the filters to remediate themselves. There are sometimes false positives, um, just so everyone is clear. But like I said, Jasper and I and everybody here at Sense, we're here to help should you run into those problems. So I think with that being said, we're kind of gonna go into, do we have the demo here? Yeah, we, we just want everyone to know that here at Sense, we are trying to improve uh, a lot of these things, okay? And, you know, you've heard a lot about Chat GPT. Um, we're doing something similar here at Sense. It is not ready yet. If you are interested, reach out to your customer success manager, account executive, uh, anybody here at Sense to get into the beta. But we are working on tools to help you improve this messaging, to help uh, you know, take these best practices and put them into, uh, into practice inside of Sense. And I also want to tell you that we are working on sort of this kind of uh, GSM um, conversion tool as well to kind of cut down on some of the UCS messaging that we're seeing. But here in this demo, you can see that we're essentially using an AI product to check if the candidate is open to exploring a role with Costco now that they have a contract ending at, um, at Walmart. Okay, and here the Sense AI has generated the, mention, uh, the message. Now, so everyone is clear, we have a little ways to go with this. We are still working on training the AI not to make statements as well. We wanna drive engagement. But you'll see a couple tools that we have here with the ability to make the message shorter, which I really like, okay, to remove excess punctuation. Again, Jasper and I are big fans of that. And the ability to make the message uh, a little bit more friendly, make it gender, gender neutral. So these are things that our amazing and talented engineering team is kind of working on behind the scenes. And we'll be coming soon to, to a lot of you to start playing around with. Um, and I think it will have a huge benefit to your operational daily lives. And with that being said, I am, I think I'm pretty much all done here, Spruthy, if you wanna kind of take it from here uh, and uh, tell everyone about Sense Messaging and some early access. Awesome, so yeah, we will be hopping into Q&A shortly, but just a quick opportunity I wanted to share with our current customers. Um, so if you want early access to our upgraded Sense Messaging interface, um, some of you may have received an email about this yesterday, um, but this update will include an improved drop-down menu for easier navigation, a send later button for more flexibility, along with general um, improvements to further increase the ease of use of Sense Messaging. So this update will be live on June 1st, but you can actually get early access as soon as May 11th. So if you and your team are interested, um, you can scan the QR code on the screen and submit your information and a Sense team member will be reaching out. And with that, we do have a ton of questions, so uh, we can hop into that. Um, if we do not get to your specific question today, um, a Sense team member will reach out and we will make sure that your question is answered. So we have a question here. Um, how will we know if someone is on the do not call registry? Right. You know, uh, we, we here, just so everyone is clear, we're kind of monitoring these rules uh, as they come through the FCC. There are tools uh, available out, out there that will allow you to do DNC checks. If that's something that you're interested in doing on your own, you can reach out to your CSM. We are talking internally whether we feel that that will be a requirement uh, with these new rules. We're keeping an eye on it. But at this time, it's not something that sense, uh, senses can it's not that we're not concerned about it, but we do not check against the DNC. We have no plans to do so in the future, but again, we are paying attention to the new rules and all the regulations that are coming down uh, the pipe for 2023. I hope that helps. And if it doesn't, feel free to reach out to your CSM or reach out to me directly. Uh, happy to talk to you. Awesome. We do have a, I think, product focus question here. Um, is the number of SMS per day limited based on brand or based on phone number? If our company sends a few thousand messages per day, but it's spread from a few different phone numbers, is it capped per company or per phone number? Yeah, no, that is a great question. If you are on 10 DLC and you are using local um, exchange phone numbers to transact your messaging, uh, your, your brand score caps and your brand score throughput 
uh, per minute with AT&T and Verizon. Just so everyone is clear here, I, I don't, Verizon doesn't really care what you do, just so we're clear. I think Verizon is kind of watching this from afar. We don't, we don't run into throughput limitations on Verizon. Uh, but with that being said, to answer your question, it is, it is capped by your brand score. Uh, it has nothing to do with your phone numbers. The carriers are on to us. So um, adding 500 phone numbers to increase your throughput, uh, to increase the amount of messaging that you can send a day is, is not, um, is, is not going to fly. There are other sending IDs that you can use. There are verified toll-free numbers, which are not capped. Um, so you are aware text message or text messages. So everyone is aware short code. Okay. A short code also different sending ID. There is no cap to the amount of daily messages that you can send on a short code throughput is high on a short code uh, as well. Uh, toll free throughput is so, so it defaults at you know, three, four messages per, uh, per second, but it can be increased. Um, I know that the carriers charge a fee for that, but it can be increased. So hopefully that answers your question. And if not, like I said, we're, we're easy to reach here. Speaking of brand score, there is a question. Where can we see our brand score? Um, we do not publish it inside of Sense, but that's a very, um, that's a very easy thing for us to grab uh, through the campaign registry. So I would just make a formal request either into support. Actually, Jasper, that, yeah, that sounded like a good yeah. idea. To... Yeah, just shoot it at support at sensehu.com and we'll be able to provide it. Pretty easy to get. I, I don't have a lot of good ideas, Jasper, but I think that was my best one. Just just send, a, send, send an email to support and uh, uh, Jasper and the team will get you hooked up. For sure. There's also a couple of questions here um, about the filtering. Um, so there's a couple of questions here about whether um, you know, you'd be flagged for um, texting about a drug test in a sentence in a text message. Uh, I, I, there is no doubt that you will want to word that carefully. Um, you know, I, I want to be clear that these algorithms change. You know, we we see patterns. We've also been in situations where you're like, how did that message get through? And um, you know, situations like, why did that message get flagged? That that's like a perfect best practice message. Um, I understand that that is extremely important, especially in healthcare. Um, I would just be very careful how you word it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll come up with something. I'm kind of blanking right now, but you know, some sort of health screening test, um, maybe something along those lines to kind of move away from mentioning the word drug or the mention of the word drugs, because that, that word right there is, would, would put your message at a severe filtering risk. And, and it's not because of any other reason other than the carriers are just trying to prevent um, you know, those shaft use cases, shaft and illicit, drug, uh, illicit drugs, illegal drugs, even though in some states they're legal, um, from getting through to their customers. So I hope that helps. Like I said, if you want to reach out, feel free, and we can come up with kind of a better game plan than my on-the-spot one. Along the same lines, will our links for references get filtered at all? Links for references. Is that, did I catch that right, Sruthi? Yeah. Links for uh, references. Jasper, do you want to handle that, or do you want me to take it? Um, we, we, could, we could double up on that my opinion here uh as you mentioned the algorithm is always changing i would want to see those links and see what those links look like i'm not concerned that they're references of any kind i would just be concerned how that domain looks how long the link is etc um because realistically the algor algorithm is not going to pick up that this is a candidate reference if that link is just a horrible formatted link and of course, we don't want it to be long either. So there's a lot to think about there. I would want to see the specific case, but in general, I would say no, as long as we're following best practices. Uh, with that being said, one important note, I noticed that was plural references. I would not advise sending out multiple links in a text message period in any case. And I'll let Craig kind of. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. 
I don't have much to add, Jasper. I think, you know, in terms of our webinar theme, right, we want to avoid the consumer shorteners. Um, the carriers aren't aren't really paying attention to whether it's a reference link or anything else. Their, their ultimate goal is we don't want spam and we don't want phishing uh, attempts to hit our subscribers. And that's the bottom line. Um, and really, really long links that kind of look, you know, algorithmically generated, um, not only is it a poor candidate experience, but it's just even more suspicious downstream to the carriers. You know, we have uh, 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 URL shorteners inside of Sense. Those are exposed to the carriers. Uh, I do highly recommend that you use those or you use your domain. It's just be careful, you know, be careful with anything that, that goes crazy. If that, if that link is, is, you know, long over 30 characters, that's, that's just going to cause you problems. Um, we're at 11 a.m. right now, but just want to squeeze in one more question here because I think it's interesting. Um, so is this filtering only an issue for the initial message or are they filtering ongoing correspondence as well? So the just, um, uh, you know, the carriers are always watching, okay? Whether that is in your initial message, uh, whether that is in a subsequent method, it, it really doesn't matter. The carriers are, are watching. What we tend to see around here is that broadcast messaging, you know, where you're sending out campaigns, that's going to put you at higher risk because of scale uh, versus those follow-up messages where, you know, hey, Craig, um, you know, you need, to, uh, you need to be here at 10 o'clock uh, and bring a sandwich because there's no lunch or whatever the case may be, that sort of personal one-to-one uh, personal -one messaging that is a much lower filtering risk. But back to what I said earlier, you know, I've been doing this a long time and sometimes I just sit here with my, you know, kind of eyes crossed uh, saying, I don't really understand how that got filtered. You know, unfortunately we sometimes with good legitimate messaging, sometimes just get caught up in this. Um, you know, we, we know that, that the, all of you are good citizens. Once in a while, you get a speeding ticket because you weren't paying attention. And, and that's, I guess, how I would kind of describe this. We do get caught up in this system of where the carriers are just trying to protect their customers. But the risks of that individual one-to-one -one messaging are much, much lower. Awesome. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, I just want to reiterate, uh, if your question was not answered today um, and you did put one in the chat, we will have a Sense team member answer your question. Um, and with that, Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciated having you all on this webinar. Um, if you have any questions or um, want to contact any of us, our emails are on the screen right now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you.